very good afternoon to everyone. Uh, as introduced, I'm Danny Tam from the International Telecommunication Union. We are a UN specialized agency based in Geneva. We are a specialized agency in the information, communications, and technologies. Uh, what we do, we allocate the uh, global spectrum allocations as well as satellite orbits, as well as we deliver. We develop technical uh, standards that ensure networks and technology seamlessly interconnect. And we also uh, strive to improve access to ICT to underserved communities worldwide. Uh, today, I'm going to be speaking on a topic of uh, how WRC 15, the World Radio Conference, in 2015, we'll balance the demands for mobile and broadband services. Well, it's just a basic introduction to the uh, WRC or the World Radio Conference. The uh, World Radio Conference uh, reviews or re and revises, if necessary, the radio regulations, which is an international treaty governing the use of the radio frequency spectrum as well as uh, geostationary and non-geostationary satellite orbits. This uh, conference uh, is held uh, every uh, three to four years. The most recent uh, World Radio Communication Conference was concluded in the beginning of 2012. In this uh, conference, uh, we saw the participations of more than 160 countries administrations uh, uh, coming, converging in Geneva with over 3,000 participants. And uh, it was interesting at the close of this conference that uh, they put into the next World Radio Conference conference in 2015, uh, agenda items related to space services. Almost half of the new agenda items were related to space services, ranging from fixed satellite services to mobile satellite services and Earth exploration satellite services. And uh, what you see here is a snapshot of the uh, agenda items uh, with very specific wordings. Uh, if you can't read it, it's fine because uh, mainly it's just to highlight that uh, these agenda items ranges from uh, 1.6 to 1.13. There are about 18 new agenda items. And uh, these agenda items uh, contain the re resolution 807 of the radio regulations. And here I have provided you a link in the ITU website uh, where you can uh, go to and uh, have a uh, better look or, or summarized version of all these agenda items. And for each of these agenda items, there's a resolutions that give the rationale or the, uh, uh, or, or the motivation as to why it is put in the uh, uh, conference agenda item in 2015. Uh, one of the uh, interesting agenda item would be uh, agenda item 1.6 related to fixed satellite services. And in this agenda item, uh, in the World Radio Conference 2015, they will be considering uh, the possible additional uh, allocations uh, in Region 1, uh, 250 megahertz between the band of 10 and 17 gigahertz for both uplink and downlink uh, satellite communication services. So, and then the, in Region 2 and 3, they'll be looking for uh, possible addition of uh, 250 to 300 megahertz of additional bandwidth in the range of 13 to 17 gigahertz. And this will, and uh, so what we are looking are basically uh, additional KA band capacity for regions one, two, three. And these are the radio regulations defined regions one, two, and three. So region one is this area here where it is uh, shaded in yellow and uh, comprises uh, geograph geographically mainly uh, Europe and Africa. And region two is the region that comprises uh, the Americas. 
Region 3 is an uh, area that comprises mainly uh, Asia, East Asia, and Southern Pacific. So the rationale or the motivation towards this agenda item or the request for this additional spectrum is because, uh, as we all know, a KU band is a band which is, is uh, extensively used for satellite communications. And uh, also, this has triggered a rapid rise in the demand for the band. So uh, satellite traffic is uh, typically uh, symmetrical in a large variety of applications meaning uh, similar amounts of uplink and downlink traffic are transmitted. However, in the, the current allocations for fixed satellite services in ITU regions 2 and 3, uh, you have a situation where there's a asymmetrical uplink and downlink allocations. And uh, there also exists uh, FS, uh, this uh, fixed satellite services capacity imbalance between the regions, especially regions 1 via V regions two and three. Here I give, is a table that summarizes the situation in region two. Currently, you can see that it's in region two, which is uh, covering the Americas. Uh, you have a total bandwidth of 800 megahertz in the uplink and uh, one gigahertz in the downlink. So this is, uh, uh, there, there, there's uh, this uh, asymmetrical uh, situation here, and uh, so and this band in the 12.7 to 12.75 gigahertz is really not really practical because it's just a 50 uh, megahertz of bandwidth. Uh, so uh, it's more practical to look for large contiguous uh, bandwidth. So that's the reason the motivation towards uh, looking for an additional 250 megahertz of. Uh, bandwidth in region two. Uh, region three comprising mainly uh, Asia. Uh, here you have a situation of uh, asymmetrical up and down link uh, FSS locations. Uh, you can you have a uh, 750 megahertz uh, location in the uplink and uh, 1.05 gigahertz uh, location in downlink. And this, there's a spectrum difference between the uplink and downlink of 300 megahertz. And finally, this is the allocations of region one, which is covering Europe and uh, Africa. And here we see we have a 750 megahertz, both up and downlink. And uh, from this slide, what we see is that uh, the region two and region three spectrum in the downlink is uh, about one gigahertz. So there is a lack or uh, difference of 250 megahertz between the uh, uh, Americas, Asia, and via uh, uh, via uh, Europe and Africa. And so that is the motivation for finding uh, additional 250 megahertz of bandwidth, both in the uplink and downlink in region one, which encompasses uh, Africa. So in short, uh, uh, WRC 15, uh, you'll be looking for the regions of Europe and Africa, there will be a possible additional spectrum of 250 megahertz, both in the uplink and downlink. And regions two, they're considering an additional 250 megahertz in the uplink, region two comprising uh, the Americas, and region three, uh, mainly the ge geographical area of Asia, you're looking at an uplink of additional capacity of 300 megahertz. This is an agenda item in WRC 15, which is not related, directly related to space services, but uh, related to uh, terrestrial mobile broadband services, uh, IMT systems. Uh, you know, today, uh, you, you know, uh, we are using uh, our phones, uh, our smartphones, and uh, there's just uh, so much spectrum that is required uh, for the uh, terrestrial mobile broadband services. And uh, just give you a, a bit of background, uh, it was uh, not so long ago in the World Radio Conference of 07 that uh, the IMT systems uh, also requested for additional spectrum capacity. and. 
in that uh, radio conference, uh, uh, they also seek out to have systems uh, deployed in the C band, and C band is a, is a very uh, long established uh, satellite communication band, and so there was a big uh, contention between the terrestrial uh, proponents and the uh, satellite proponents because. Uh, with these uh, IMT deployments, these, these are mass deployments. In the WRC 07, the IMT were allocated some capacity in the 34 to 3600 megahertz uh, through uh, an opt in system where countries who wish to implement IMT in this band they could, but uh, they so it's not a global allocation, it's only uh, uh, countries wishing to. Uh, have uh, IMT in their countries, then they can opt in to be uh, to have these allocations. And uh, there were also stringent power limits and coordination requirements imposed on these IMT systems. So at the end of WRC 07, uh, the satellite community came out very happy that uh, uh, because it concluded that there is a need for continued interference-free operation of the C-band satellite services. So as I say, the C band is very important to the uh, satellite community. It has a long history, so it has uh, extensive deployment all over the world. And uh, the main uh, benefit or uh, advantage of C band is the uh, highly resilient uh, nature of C band to rain perturbations. And uh, C band also supports uh, some very critical applications, uh, for example, in Africa. Uh, the aeronautical communication infrastructure based on visa systems uh, operates over the fixed satellite services C band. And uh, C band, uh, like uh, in situations of uh, 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 disaster, natural disaster, like what happened in uh, Indonesia, in, uh, in Sumatra, as, as well as uh, in uh, Japan, you know, it's used for emergency and disaster recovery communications. So it supports some pretty critical applications for satellites. Fast forward to today, uh, this is a summary of uh, spectrum requirements received by a working party 5D, which is a working party in the ITU, we work through uh, consultations and study groups. These study groups, they carry out uh, compatibility sharing analysis. Uh, and uh, so working party 5D is a working party that uh, is uh, specializes in uh, IMT systems. So as you can see, uh, this is the contributions received in response to this agenda item. There is uh, extensive demand by these uh, mobile broadband uh, uh, users, uh, just by this one slide here. So there's uh, no doubt that there is a need for spectrum in that area. And this agenda item has uh, created a lot of interest by all radio communication service users because uh, uh, of the amount of bandwidth they're looking for. So uh, because of this extensive interest by all the various radio communication service users, uh, uh, the a joint task group comprising of study groups four, five, and six, and seven was formed. Usually you have a study group that will just look into an agenda item, a uh, specific agenda item. But because this topic is such a delicate and contentious topic, uh, it was uh, decided that, you know, uh, this should be looked into taking the considerations of all the various radio communication stakeholders. Uh, so that's why this joint task group is formed, comprising study group four, which uh, is a study group which uh, considers satellite services, study group five, which uh, considers terrestrial services, and study group six and seven, broadcasting and science services. So, uh, as I mentioned that in WRC 2012, uh, we concluded that in the beginning of uh, Feb uh, February 2012. So, 
and uh, it has been now slightly over a year. So, and already uh, studies and negotiations are going on, and uh, so uh, the preliminary comments uh, by this uh, working party 5D, which is on IMT systems, is that they are looking for they are proposing, although they have not shortlisted the the bands yet, but they are not, they are again looking for bands from 470 to. Uh, 6425 megahertz, which is a band comprising uh, the C band uh, uh, segment. So, FSS has locations in uh, the C band 34 to 4200 megahertz, 45 to 4800 megahertz, 5725 to 6425 megahertz. In addition, there was also some contributions received for use of uh, terrestrial IMT systems. Uh, in bands above the C band, and these are also bands which are currently allocated for satellite services. So, at this stage of time, these uh, proposed frequency ranges uh, by the working party they have not looked into sharing and compatibility with existing services and it's a very initial proposal and uh, and have not been narrowed down to what you call a candidate band where they will eventually carry out studies and look into it in detail as to the compatibility of uh, with existing services and the conditions for operating with services so incidentally the upcoming joint task group 4567 meeting will be held in South Africa. So the spotlight is really on this upcoming 4567 joint task group. And uh, it is in East London in July 2013 in South Africa. And this will be something which is quite significant because uh, uh, people will be looking at it as to, to see uh, what are the bands IMT will finally uh, or eventually propose. So the upcoming two meetings is July and November 2013. So if C-band is pursued for IMT, for the satellite community, it will be something like Deja Vu. You know, it's like the situation leading to WRC 2007 when IMT systems seek, uh, 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 narrow some candidate band in the C-band. So this will certainly become one of the more contentious agenda items leading to WRC 15. Another interesting agenda item is uh, agenda item 1.9. Here, the conference will consider additional capacity in the X-band regions. So there will be a additional consideration of 100 megahertz capacity uh, for the fixed satellite services, as well as uh, they are seeking for additional over 300 megahertz of capacity for the maritime mobile satellite services and the uh, rationale or the motivation towards this agenda item is that uh, some countries have already reported a shortfall of spectrum for their current future applications of these bands uh, the additional bandwidth requirements for data transmission on these next generation satellites are estimated to be around 100 megahertz so this is a snapshot of the uh, current situation uh, expand uh, of, of uh, allocations for fixed satellite services. You have uh, 500 megahertz, and uh, already uh, fixed satellite services and are uh, sharing a portion of the uh, uh, the band, the 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 start of the uh, X band. So in the next WRC, uh, uh, what? Uh, will, uh, will be considered is an additional 100 megahertz in the top half of the uh, 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 top portion of the uplink expand and bottom portion of the uh, downlink expand. And also, they'll be looking for additional capacity in the maritime MSS systems, and this will extend from uh, the current uh, MSS allocations which is being shared with FSS. So, in short, uh, in the X-band, you're looking at a possible additional 100 megahertz capacity worldwide for uplink and downlink. 
And for maritime MSS, uh, there will be a possible additional 375 megahertz of capacity worldwide for both uplink and downlink. And uh, this is another interesting agenda item, which is agenda item 1.1, which also may have some implications on the uh, uh, satellite broadband services. Uh, and these agenda items uh, consider the additional spectrum for mobile satellite services uh, for uh, broadband applications in the range of 22 to 26 gigahertz, which is basically the KA band frequency. So the rationale behind this uh, agenda item is that earlier studies have indicated there will be a short for a spectrum by the year 2020 and the satellite component of IMT require a certain amount of bandwidth. Also for mobile satellite services broadband application, uh, the pro projection is about 240 to 235 megahertz by the year 2020. So, to summarize, uh, the WRC revises and reviews the regulations, and the regulations are important to facilitate access to finite spectrum. Uh, the, and uh, the way the regulation work, it also ensure the adequate and timely availability of spectrum to balance all the various demands of the competing radio communication services. Uh, the regulations also often take into a, a, a consideration of the technology and uh, promotes the, this technology, advancement in technology. And uh, uh, the regulation compels all the users to use the spectrum uh, efficiently. And it's essential to bolster future group of services that uses the radio spectrum. So with this, I would just like to say that, uh, well, the World Radio Conference 15, the stage is set for November 2015. So if you're interested in uh, any of these issues, uh, you should keep your eye on this leading up to WRC 15. And certainly, there'll be lots of interesting discussions going on. Thank you.